everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Deborah Murray, an infectious diseases physician, and today we'll talk about urinary catheter-associated infections. We'll discuss why you're at an increased risk of infection with a urinary catheter, then we'll briefly discuss how your symptoms may actually be different and the diagnosis and treatment. Now be sure to stay tuned to the end where we will give you important prevention tips. Let's get started. Okay, you'll find throughout this slide that I often abbreviate catheter-associated urinary tract infection as COTI. And let's get down to the dirty part of it. Well, why is it dirty? Well, here's the urethra. And you can see where the catheter inserts in, into the urethra. And as we talked about last time on UTIs in general, the urethra is somewhat of a dirty area. It's close to the anus and this perineal area often gets contaminated with bacteria that are in our feces or poop. And uh, females are at a higher risk because their urethra is shorter. Well, now you put a urinary catheter in that area and you have tubing where bacteria can climb around onto the tubing. So what are the risk factors of getting a cauti? It's the presence and duration of the catheter. Catheters become colonized at a rate of three to 10% per day. So you can understand if you have a long-term catheter in place, after several days, virtually all of the catheter is going to be colonized. So bacteria can grow where the urine enters the uh, catheter. For example, up in the right-hand corner, you can see where the catheter is entering at the urethra. Bacteria can grow right around that catheter, and they sit there in what's called what we call a biofilm. It's just a group of bacteria living together and sitting on the catheter. And they can also grow in the catheter drainage bag itself. So that can be a, in, increase your risk of getting a cauti. And there can be errors in care of the catheter. And females, older age, Patients with diabetes frequently have a risk as well. So they become colonized. What does that mean? It means bacteria are living on the catheter. They're not causing infection all the time. They're just living there. Like we talked about, it occurs at the urethral area from outside the skin. If that perennial area gets contaminated with feces, which it often does, that can, those bacteria can migrate up to that catheter. And then they can grow there and sit there, and sometimes they can get inside the urine and inside the bladder as well. And bacteria can also get uh, colonized within the drainage collection tubing, or the drainage bag. And Sometimes these bacteria can end up causing an infection. So the big question is, if you're culturing the urine or sending the urine off for studies to see if it's, quote, infected, how do you know that it's not bacteria just sitting there on the catheter? How do you know if it's a true cauti? Well, I want to remind you again, this is the prevalence of asymptomatic bacteria. And look at the bottom line. If you have a long-term urinary catheter in place, about 100% of the time, if you test that urine, it's gonna have a positive culture. And what asymptomatic means, people don't have any symptoms. The bacteria is just sitting there. And so what are the signs and symptoms of a cauti? Well, first thing is, you should not be getting any screening urinary cultures without having some form of signs or symptoms because 
of what we just discussed, that colonization issue. Do not use a change in the color or smell of your urine as a sign of a urinary tract infection. You should have some other form of symptoms. So patients with a catheter can sometimes have atypical symptoms, and it may differ from one patient to another. Typically, patients with a catheter don't have this sense of needing to urinate frequently or feeling like uh, you need to urinate right away or discomfort with urination as a sign of infection. Do you know why? It's because the catheter itself can cause those symptoms. And this is especially common in patients that first get a urinary catheter. So signs and symptoms of a cauti can oftentimes be like flank or side pain, back pain or tenderness, or lower abdominal pain in what we would call the suprapubic area. People can get fever or just a generalized illness. In spinal cord patients, may have atypical symptoms, like they may just generally feel uneasy. They may have general malaise or fever. They can get increased spasticity or have symptoms of what we call autonomic dysreflexia. And what is that? Abnormal involuntary autonomic reactions, such as a rapid heart rate, decrease or an increase in their blood pressure, increasing muscle spasms, like excessive sweating. Oftentimes these symptoms are caused from urinary obstruction or fecal impaction. It doesn't necessarily mean a urinary tract infection. So again, urine should not be, quote, screened for infection unless there are symptoms. A change in the appearance of urine alone is not a symptom. Do not, please do not request urine cultures only for the appearance of urine. And to be honest with you, we are still educating clinicians on this fact. And if you have a nurse coming out and you're otherwise feeling well, and she doesn't like the looks of your urine and wants to send it for a urine culture, please talk with your clinician and show them this slide deck. And don't ask for a repeat urine culture to document clearance of bacteria from the urine. Because again, you may be picking up bacteria that are just sitting there. And you can see the, some of the exceptions below. That include like prior to urologic surgery or pregnancy, or sometimes after kidney transplant or neutropenic fever. So for diagnosis of a cauti, only test for a UTI if you have symptoms because bacteria may be sitting in the catheter and not causing true infection. And the best case scenario to evaluate for infection is to remove the catheter prior to obtaining a urinary sample. Try to get rid of those bacteria that are just sitting on the catheter. And you can obtain a new specimen either by a straight catheterization or a midstream collection if you're able, or by placing a new urinary catheter if a new catheter is still required. And you want to obtain, make sure that the urine is obtained from a sampling port, not from the urine that's sitting in the drainage bay. So treatment of a cauti, well, remove the catheter because as we talked about, bacteria are growing on it. If the catheter is still required, either perform intermittent catheterization or have a new urinary catheter placed and treatment is somewhere around seven to 14 days. It really depends on the case and the antibiotics that are used. 
So the important parts are prevention. Avoid any unnecessary urinary catheter and request removal as soon as possible. Do intermittent catheterization if you're able. These, this results in less risk of infection. Instead of having a chronic catheter sitting in there, you're intermittently performing the catheterization. Make sure you adhere to a septic technique during placement of any catheter and handling of the catheter. Drink plenty of water. Studies have shown it can actually prevent and sometimes treat early urinary tract infections. So drink eight to 10, 12 glasses of water per day. Keep the drainage bag below the level of the bladder. Avoid the floor. floor. We don't want the drainage bag to get contaminated with things sitting on the floor. We want all the urine in the drainage bag to flow away from the bladder and the urethra. You could place the drainage bag in a clean waste basket with a clean trash bag liner. Avoid any loops or kinks because that might result in reflux of the urine. Always wash your hands with either soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer before and after manipulating your catheter. When you empty the drainage bag, do not touch the spout of the drainage bag to the toilet or other reservoir you're using. Perform daily cleaning of the periurethral area using mild soap and water. Clean the urethral opening where the catheter enters. Clean the genital area. And also clean the catheter starting where the catheter enters your body. Now you may need to hold on to the catheter near the urethra so you don't provide any unnecessary tension on the catheter. And also, this is important specifically as well, clean that perennial area that I showed you and the perianal area, especially after a bowel movement. Now, whenever you're cleaning, clean down the catheter, and if you're cleaning the genital area, clean from the front towards the anus. Again, this is educational purposes. Please consult your healthcare provider for guidance specific to your case. Remember your IQ, stay informed. You can watch more videos on this channel for education regarding infections and be sure to ask questions to your provider. Why am I getting this? Do I have a true infection? What is the risk and benefit? Thank you.